girl Cupid, and today we are going to be getting into a request. I forgot who requested it, but um, if you watched one of my last videos, I did Are You the Hero or the Villain? Ooh, and that was a fun reading. And so, um, someone commented that I should do What Villain Archetype Are You? And so, that's what we're doing today. How exciting, yay! So, I didn't really know how I wanted to do this at first, but I decided on doing it one way, right? So, I took 12 um, villain archetypes. I'm just going to move this up. I took, like, well, how many? Maybe I did just 10. I can't remember. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so I have... 10 villain archetypes on a row of pieces of paper. I'm going to read each to you guys, and then I'm going to shuffle them up, assign them to a group. And then, okay, so I decided a different way to do this. I'm just going to not read any of them to you. I'm going to shuffle them all up. There are 10 archetypes here. I'm just going to shuffle them up, and I'm going to assign them to the four groups. I just feel like it'll be more interesting that way. So I just want... Let's see. I don't really know how to shuffle them, like, really. Okay, so this is going to be group one. Oh, I didn't have any intentions. Let's start over with intentions, okay? I'm shuffling. Give me one. Give me one for group one. Give me one for group one. Okay. I don't know why I'm so frantic. Like, I just feel like I don't know how to do this. Okay. Give me one for group two. Give me one for group three. Give me one for group three. Give me one for group four. Okay, we got one. <clears throat> okay. So, if, you, if I didn't have it on the camera, I was basically just doing this until one popped out. But anyway, I'm going to leave the rest over here. So, we have four groups, okay? Group one is going to be this skull and crossbones with this little paper. Group two is going to be this black tambourine with this little paper. Group three is going to be the seashell with this little paper. And group four will be the clear marble with this paper, okay? So, um, as always, there is going to be a picture inserted so that you can pause the video and meditate on which group you belong to. And all timestamps for each group will be in the description box below. See you at your reading. Hi, group one. You have chosen the skull and crossbones. Let's see what is your villain archetype, all right? And then I'll shuffle your cards, okay? We have, ooh, the mastermind, intellectual challenges, diabolical plots, obsessive, and breaks others' will. All right, I'm going to put that there, and I'm going to shuffle your cards. We're going to see what makes group one a mastermind, all right? I'm going to shuffle your cards and catch you on the other side. shuffling took so long I hope the other people's shuffling doesn't take this long but it might it might um but I feel like we're getting into a very conceptual type of reading you know what I mean your villain archetype here you are um the mastermind group one okay you're the mastermind right this is our intellectual villain right this is the villain that has brains over bronze, right? This is um, our villain. It says diabolical plots, you know, can be obsessive, right? And this is the type of villain that uses their intellect to take advantage of people, right? To break their will. So let's get into why. What makes you, what makes you... You know, some of that might already resonate, but we're going to see what makes you specifically a mastermind, okay? So, in the first, as always, I do read vertically, you know what I'm saying? But we're going to, it don't matter. I'm just going to be natural, right? I'm going to be candid. So, give me one second. All right. You have the Eight of Wands. 
group one. The eight of wands. Then underneath here we have the Knight of Cups. It says, <clears throat> it says Richard Worley. He set out from New York with an ill crew and carried few supplies. They captured a boat laden with household goods. Okay. Mm. So for me, I'm getting like finesse, right? You're able to finesse out of hard situations, right? Um, you know, the Eight of Wands often represents, you know, sudden opportunities, right? Sudden blessings, sudden, sudden arrows coming down, you know, that can change your, um, your situation from, for the better, right? Uh, and then right underneath here, we have the Six of Swords, okay? And so this is like about coming out of uh, harsh waters or rough waters, right? Coming out of a place of difficulty, coming out of a place of hardships, right? So already your intellect, right? Because that's the main feature here, right? Your intellect. You're a strategic person, but you are able to use this intellect to get you out of hard situations get yourself out of hard situations get yourself out of trouble get yourself out of difficulty right you are um probably perceived as being really blessed right a like i said able to get out of things right um people around you may feel like you know good things are always happening to you or you're like very fortunate you know what i mean um when it comes to maybe even your, you know, doing actual villainous activities, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you don't get caught, right? You're, you you find a way to not get caught doing certain things. Uh, we have talk here for one of our message cards. So, um, for a lot of you, this comes from, you have a, a way with words, right? This is one of the ways your intellect shows itself, right? Maybe it's your vocabulary. Maybe it's just the way you're able to articulate yourself, you're able to do it in a way that can get you out of trouble, right? You know how to, um, it could be your voice, right? It could be your voice, it could be your words, it could just be your inflections, right? Um, but it's like you use this very strategically, right? That's where the intellect comes in. You use this very strategically, all right? I definitely feel like, yeah, like you might talk. I, I see this with the, um, you're able to talk your, talk your way into getting more resources. Maybe you're able to convince people to let you, lo to loan you money or just buy you things. Like maybe people just gift you things or maybe people just offer to give you stuff. Um, but it's like, it's something about your use of words, like when you communicate with people that can help you get you out of trouble, get you out of hardship, right? Um, out of rough waters. Mm -hmm. I also see that you're, you have a way, maybe you're also able to like shut down arguments um, or shut down disagreements for some of you. Like, make, you're able to just kind of, like, shut people down. Like, I don't know. And for some of you, I'm not even getting that you're mean. It could just be, like, the way you present yourself. You're able to kind of, like, flex your intellect in a disagreement or with an, in, within an argument without necessarily, like, coming out of character and being mean. But it, it puts the other person in check, right? Like, I'm getting checkmate, right? You, you, you're able to debate, you know what I'm saying? You can debate, mm. but yeah, it's like you're, you're definitely able to talk your way into getting whatever you want. Not maybe whatever, but a good bit of what you want. We also have over here, we have the magician. Then under that, we have the queen of swords. Ooh, air energy coming through. Already lots of air. I mean, I would say so far, 
You have cups, air, fire. Wait, no, no, no. Let me see. We have cups and air the most. And then we have a little bit of fire. And then very little bit of earth. Okay? So, a lot of intellect. Which I guess makes sense, right? We have the mastermind. But yeah, we so we have the Queen of Swords here. And this says Walter Kennedy. All right. He was part of the crew of Pirate. He was part of the crew of Pirate Bartholomew Roberts when they captured a por a Portuguese ship carrying rich booty. <laughs> he was hanged in 1721. Okay, let's see. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, because this is what I'm getting here. Already I see in these two images, they're posing very similarly, right? He's lifting this wand and he's holding up this sword. I hope y'all can see. Can y'all see that? I'm gonna hold it right here, yeah. So he is lifting this wand and he's lifting this sword like in the same position. And then there's this cup here while he's holding this cup, right? It looks like he's holding a cup, a chalice. But I'm also seeing this repetition of, oh, yeah, this repetition of the skull and crossbones here and here, right? Mm. I'm also p hearing the word label, right? Because these skull and crossbones, like, they make me think of, like, something that's poisoned, right? Something that's poisoned, something that's tainted, and, like, how a label would have this for, like, poison. And so I feel like there's something here about the labeling, okay? I feel like what makes you a mastermind is your ability to be resourceful, right? It's either about being resourceful or having resources, right? Oh, no, I think it, honestly, I think it's about your use of resources. Yeah, it's about your use of resources, okay? So you're able to, it's like you're able to use your, use resources to create more resources. Mm. Like, you're able to multiply what you have, right? Mm. I feel like this goes into the diabolical plots, right? I feel like you are overall a strategic person, right? So what I'm getting like this pattern here, even with talking your way out of things, is that you act with intention, right? You act with a strategy in mind, right? You are thinking your way through problems to get solutions, right? And the actions that you take are very much, um, it's like it's very obvious that they come from a mental place, that these actions don't just happen on impulse. You have thought your way to that point, okay? And so I feel like here with the, um, the magician and then this Walter Kennedy card, right? The Queen of Swords, I feel like, here, I'm also feeling like you can play a you can play several roles, right? This is a part of your resourcefulness. Is you can play a part, right? Because I'm focusing on this where he was a part of a crew, right? He was part of a crew, and they and they captured the Portuguese ship, and so it's like you can shape shift and play the role of a team player, right? You can work with others. You can work with elements, right? You can work with different elements to um, to achieve a higher goal, right? You are a team player, okay? And that's why with this label here, it's like you aren't really, you can't really be defined, right? The way you go about it, um, I also hear like unpredictable, right? Maybe some people have a hard time predicting your next move, but it's because you're like adaptive, right? Or you're adaptable, or mutable, you know, depending on where this is, you know, it's like you can kind of like, it's like you can find a way to fit in a way that works for you. Um, and with the shape shift, right, I'm also hearing masking. So some of you mask and, um, and that could, 
that can mean honestly a bunch of different stuff and I feel like it will resonate differently for everyone but for the shape shift I mean I'm getting like a mask I'm getting somebody that play, can play a role right even with this talking over here I'm seeing somebody who um like when you talk your way out of things it's like you're almost putting on you could put on like a verbal mask to incite a particular response to get a particular like um you know effect you know what i'm saying and so with the shape shift here i feel like you play the role that needs to be played or you you do with what you can you know what i'm saying like hmm yeah it's like it's very strategic very strategic it's almost like trickery, right? We're tricking the people around us, right? This is that's this diabolical plot I'm feeling like. You're a mastermind because you have these plots, you're plotting, right? The Ten of Wands, you're working behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, and a magician is like an illusionist as well. So yeah, like you're creating these illusions, you know what I'm saying? Um to hide your true intentions for sure, right? Or just simply to get what you want. And maybe what you want requires you to hide your true intentions. You know what I mean? But then lastly over here, well, I guess it's not last, but over here we have the King of Pentacles, okay? The Six of Cups, Thomas Jew. No, that's a T. Sorry, guys. Let me do, 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 cut, all right? We have the Six of Cups, Thomas II, Thomas II. Two was a famous pirate based in Madagascar. He had such a reputation for kindness that ships seldom resisted him. Mm. And then we have this Page of Cups right down here. Wow, and I was just talking about masking, right? This is... I see why mm -hmm. you're a mastermind because you can play this part. It's like you have a nice mask, right? You have a, uh, like this, there's this illusion and look, that's not even to say that you're not really a nice person or that you are really like actually evil deep down, but it's like, you're able to use kindness and sweetness. Some of you might have a great smile. It's like, you know, that you have a nice voice. You know how to play a role to get what you want, right? And this sweet demeanor or this kind this kind persona that you have, it hides your intentions, right? Because we have this card here that says questions reveal motives and intentions. And so it's like you, I feel like you put on a mask that you know is going to um, either you you put on something that people aren't really going to question, right? You put on the mask that people don't um, aren't really going to question or second guess, um, or like most people won't. Or you know that this is that when you play this role, most people do not question you or have suspicions, right? You're able to kind of fly under the radar right or yeah or like you're able to get away with things or you're able to just put on a front yeah like you're just able to fly under the radar like yeah like they seldom resisted him right you're able to just kind of get your way all right this is so interesting and you do find intellectual stimulation from this this appeals to your intellectual side the way that you're able to like I said, finesse your way through whatever scenarios this is, you know, referencing. This is so interesting, okay? Hmm. Then we have over here the Page of Swords at the bottom of the deck and then the Queen of Cups. This is interesting to me, so... With the, with the Page of Cups, I feel like this is about you being on the outside and being observant, right? This is also what makes you a mastermind is that 
it's your uh, observational skills that allows you to be uh, effective. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you weren't as observational as you were in terms of, like, how to how to move within the situation, you would not be as successful. I feel like with this Queen of Cups here, the way she's kind of, like, kind of drained, it's like people... I feel like people want to give to you even if you don't give back in return, right? Or you're able to take from people um, without having to pay for it, maybe, or having to return. I don't know. I feel like, because, you know, this is a villain story. So, you know what I'm saying? If you're not a villain in real life, then, you know, apply this as it applies, but I am getting somebody who is able to, like I say, get away with things or finesse things, um, you know, play a part and gain more, right? I feel like with the Queen of Cups here, this can be, to me, about the recipient or the person or the people on the other end of this, right? Who um, find out later or realize later, but the queen of cups, sometimes I don't even think she realizes. I think she's still just, you know, just giving, you know, just depleted and not seeing it or like just drained, but not seeing it. You know, I feel like this is just the recip the, the, whoever is on the other end of your energy, right? Where let's say you talked your way out of a situation, you know what I'm saying? It's like you have this effect where, you just can't be denied is what I'm getting, right? Like, it's either that you're so sweet, like you play this so nice, sweet, or just the words you say, you're able to find that reason where you just, you aren't denied, you know what I'm saying? And it's like only after you've walked away and the deal is done, is it like, dang, they really played me. Dang, they really like got over on me. Or dang, I was a sucker. Like, you know how sometimes somebody's like so cute and you're just like, yeah, you can have whatever you want. And then after they leave, you're like, dang, I can't believe I let them have whatever they want. So it's like that type of energy where it's like, damn, they took off. Dang, they, I really, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm getting here. And then with the King of Pentacles, it's like, you win every time. You win every time. You get, you know, this could be about money. This could be about gifts. This could be about, like, if it's a job, a raise, like, either way, it's like, it's about gaining resources, right? You gain resources from this villainous, you know, mastermind character of yours, okay? So, anyway, I, I think that answered the question. What is your villain archetype? I hope that answers the question because I get carried away. So if you enjoyed this reading, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment. And if you'd like to be notified uh, when I post new videos, then subscribe and ring that notification bell. Bye, group one. Hi, group two. You have chosen the black tourmaline okay oops i forgot to move this there's a lot of parts and pieces to this reading guys okay first i'm going to read your villain archetype and then i'll shuffle your cards all right so group two what type of villain are you Ooh, this is interesting we got the authority figure all right this says has power but craves more Goal to dominate and leads with fear. Cruel tyrant and only listens to self. Okay, so group two, we're going to get into what makes you an authority figure. Some of those things might already resonate with you, but it's all right. We're going to see why you are, why you individually are an authority figure. So I'm going to shuffle your cards and see you on the other side.
So you are definitely in a position of authority, okay? You've got the authority figure archetype. You with I do feel like some of you may have children. If you don't have children, you are the leader somewhere. You have you're in a position of power, you are in the position that has control, okay? And you are in charge of other people is what I get here with the authority figure, villain archetype. I want to get right into the cards, okay? So first we have the Six of Cups, okay? So this is where I feel like some of you have children, right? You are a parent, okay? Then we also have this Three of Pen no, this Three of Swords right underneath here with Jack Rackman. It says, also known as Calico Jack, he had a short but very successful career as a pirate captain in the West Indies and the Caribbean. All right. Um, this is interesting. It has a short but successful career. Okay, so what I feel like is some of you may be a coach, right, or have coached, right? Maybe some of you... Um, and this could be sports coaching, life coaching, anything, right? So some of you could be a coach, but some of you are in this position of leadership, right? Whether you're a parent or you, for some of you, I do feel like it's, this is like an instructor type of position, right? I'm getting somebody who is supposed to lead and guide others, okay? Um, but I feel like with the tower here, hmm, and the fact that this says it was a short but successful career, I do feel like this archetype that you that you possess um, has caused this to have an ending, right? Right, because we have um, has power but craves more, right? Um, so maybe there's this this vibe of like either overstepping certain boundaries as an authority figure, okay? Uh, maybe there have been some blow-ups, some mutiny. Is that what it's called? Mutiny? Where, like, people, where, like, the crew members might try and take over the captain or, might, like, people might start questioning you and your authority. Maybe you've had instances like that. Um, huh. Yeah, because with this embrace inevitability... I'm focusing more so on like the compatibility, right? How um, when there when there's a lack of compatibility, then the success of something be, or the chances of something being long term is like, you know, not likely, right? It's more likely to fail than succeed if if the if the compatibility is wrong, right? Which is what I feel here with the tower, like of having fallouts. Like you have fallouts with um, people that you lead or that you try to lead. Because, you know, because of your views. And I feel like we're going to get into that over here. And so uh, we have the Four of Cups. Sorry, there's so many cards. I try to be, like, mindful of how many cards I have on here. But I definitely went crazy with what cards I was going to use. So we have the Four of Cups. We have... The Nine of Swords, Henry Every, one of the most famous English pirates in the model for Daniel Defoe's books. He served in the Royal Army before he became a pirate. Ah, the models. Ooh, yeah. So, okay. There is this um, image, right? There's an image, right? Or there's a way of doing things that you try to uphold, right? With the Four of Cups, I feel like this energy of just not being satisfied by the efforts of those that are under you, right? And there's this image here, you know, like you are the ideal or in your head, you're the ideal or maybe you've been told that you're at the, the ideal, maybe at work or by other people. Maybe you have these accolades, maybe you have these awards, right? You have this credentials to back up this prestige or this expertise you know, this right that you have to critique, right? You have it to back it up. And so it's like, I'm just getting somebody who like, 
it's kind of hard to please you, right? It's kind of hard to meet your standards, right? With the four of cups, like you're just not impressed, right? I see somebody who's not impressed, right? Like maybe you're a coach and you're looking at your team's performance and you're like, nah, nah, it, it's not cutting it, right? Or you're looking at your class's grades and you're like, it's like, you're like, y'all didn't study, you know? Or, I mean, it can be, it can be any varying level of villainry, right? You know, it might be more like, you know, you're a harsh teacher and some of you could just be, you know, an actual, you know, dictator of a country. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, with the Henry Every here in the Nine of Swords, I feel like this is, um, I feel like we have the Nine of Swords here because your opinion matters, right? And that's why this is like, this is your villain story because your opinion matters. If you are not happy with someone's performance, then you can kick them off the team. You can give them the bad grade. You can give them a bad evaluation. You can get them fired, whatever it could be. You could ground them, right? If you're not happy with the performance, you are in a position to bring down the hammer in whatever way, you know, it, you know, it needs to be brought down. Hmm. There's something about the army here that is standing out to me. Hmm. Maybe it has to do with, maybe because sometimes I, I do associate like, the word tyrant with like maybe military, you know, or authority. I guess I do associate authority with military, but that's just standing out to me. So we also have the eight of cups that came out in this, in this, uh, column or whatever. Uh, and I feel like this has to do with like criticism and evaluation. Okay. I feel like what's coming out here for you group two is that you, I feel like you pick at people's wounds or you give criticisms that, that really do, you know, irk people, right? Like, in whatever way that, way that might be, like, for some of you, they just be shook or it's like, you know, it's like, but it's like the, the critiques you give, maybe some feel like are a little harsh or maybe, I don't know. I feel like you can be a little harsh, right? With the Eight of Cups, it's like, I don't know. To me, that doesn't feel very encouraging. It's almost like, yeah, it's like the critique is discouraging. It's kind of like, mm, leaving people to feel hurt, right? Because we have picking the wounds. And so it could be that you you will you will call out the same thing over and over no matter like as long as that is like let's say like we're going back to the coach example right let's say you know one of your players or one of your dancers or whatever keeps doing you know the thing it's like you're going to call it out every time because you can because because you you care you have a standard you want to uphold even though they already heard it and even though it each time, like, you know, it hurts them more and more every time you say it. You don't care. You're going to say it every time that you want to, right? Anytime you notice it, you're going to say it, right? And so it's like you don't have this problem of, like, continuing to just, like, pick at things. Like, you know, like, it's kind of unrelenting, right? Even the Four of Cups, like, not being impressed. It's like you are unrelenting. Like, you're a tough crowd, right? Like, you... You, if you're not digging it, like it's your standard or get the F out, right? Your standard matters, okay? We have the King of Swords here. Then we have the Queen of Pentacles. It says Pirate Sayings. And then we have, oh, I should read the Pirate Sayings. So the King of Swords and then the Queen of Pentacles. Dead men tell no tales. Grab thee a winch. Polly want a cracker. <laughs> and then we have the 
Um, king of, I mean, not the king, the knight of pentacles here. We have the knight of pentacles. So what I'm getting here, oh, and then we up here, it says you cannot build muscle if you do not use them. So what I'm getting here is that for some of you, you are definitely in a position to instruct others or to guide others, whether that's a parent, a teacher, a coach, um, you know, a trainer, whatever, like. I feel like you, um, I feel what I'm getting here is that you can be condescending while giving the advice. Like, I feel like this has a lot to do with how you communicate with the people that you are you know, over, right? This has a lot to do with how you communicate with them. So I feel like there is like a over, a, yeah, a, a crossing the boundary, right? Because with this here, how it says has power, but craves more. It's like, you're already in this position to lead and guide, but it's like, maybe, um, you kind of let that go to your head and you, and you overstep that boundary or yeah, you, you overstep that line between critique and insult, right? Or some of your, the things you say are on that line, right? Because when I'm looking at this card here, you know, and the King of Swords to me can be defensive, right? Um, a defensive energy. And so like your language may come off condescending or defensive, right? It's this Queen of Pentacles, also this Queen of Pentacles, I do sometimes think of as like, um, like a very like, like, this is the mom that, like, hovers over your grades. Like, this is the mom that's, like, always... I don't know. It's like, I just think, in my mind, like, the Queen of Pentacles is the one that's, like, looking at your grades in between, um, you know, report cards. Because, you know, like, parents can check your grades online now. And they're like, I saw that you got whatever on the test today. You know what I'm saying? And so, I feel like with these sayings, they're kind of, like, condescending, like... Dead men tell no tales. It's like this cryptic warning. Um, grab thee a wench. It's just like, like, you know how parents will like tell you what to do with your life? Like you like go marry a whatever or go be a doctor or you're going to go to college and you're going to do this. Like just telling you what your next step is going to be. And then Polly want a cracker. Like to me, this is kind of like mocking or, or condescending or like not taking, um, someone else's thoughts or opinions seriously. Right. And so I feel like you can kind of only see your way as the right way. You know what I mean? Um, right? With this last line, only listens to self. So it's like you... Oh, and the, look, I accidentally, I accidentally knocked over part of this deck. And at the top, it cut to power, right? So it's like... So you can, yeah, maybe you work with younger people or these are about like your children um, or you're a teacher, but it's like, it's like with the Knight of, with the Knight of Pentacles, right? It's like, yes, this is all to help and to teach and to coach, right? Because we have this advice, you cannot build muscle if you do not use them. And so maybe you have this tough love philosophy, Maybe you feel like being tough and hard or, or, you know, this, have this unrelenting nature. You might feel like this is the best way to teach, right? This is the best way to get your point across. Sorry, my camera cut off, but yeah, it's like, even though you might think this is the best way to get your point across, um, what I see here with embrace the inevitability and this tower card, and also the fact that this says, that he had a short but very successful career. What I'm getting here is that the reality of your actions or the reality of the way you go about it is that it, it um, creates resentment. Um, it, yeah, it creates resentment in the people that you're supposed to be guiding. And it doesn't allow, like there's no longevity here, right? Um, with, with a situation like this, it's inevitable for it to fall apart or there to be pushback or there to be this falling out, like with the tower card, um, with, you know, with these people in the future. 
Uh, I see this Queen of Cups here at the bottom of the deck, and then also the Page of Pentacles. And so I feel like, yeah, it, you know, this, you know, in real life, right, because none of us are like villain villains, but it's like this is coming from a place of you doing what's right um, and also meeting certain needs, okay? Make sure you turn that TV down. Yeah, like, this is coming from, like, you trying to fulfill certain needs or, you know, doing the right thing. Um, but it's also with this Page of Pentacles, I feel like it's kind of disregarding um, other people's actual. It's, like, actually disregarding other people. So, it's, like, you're trying to meet these needs while disregarding people's needs, okay? Um, and that's why you are... You know, this authority figure villain, like, it's almost like you kind of let it go to your head and you're like overly controlling the entire scenario because maybe you feel like you're the best one to take charge. You have the best um, perspective, right? You have the best perspective. You're the most, you feel like you're the most qualified, whatever it may be, um... Yeah, the way you go going about it, it's actually created just a lot of resentment. So, do I have anything else to say, group two? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I see here is that you like to be in charge. I don't think anything's wrong with that, but I feel like you like to be in charge. You like to be in control, but you may need to work on creating that balance between, you know, being in control, but also remembering that other people have agency, over who they are and where they're going to go in life. Um, I don't know. There just needs to be a bit of balance. Especially with the way you talk to people. The way you give criticism. Um, you know, how you give advice as well. What type of advice. Like, is it really helpful or is it coming from um, just your own bias, right? Your own idea of, of what people should do, right? Um yeah, with this page of pentacles, it's kind of like not seeing people as they are, right? Not seeing them as fully able to construct their own, like, way of doing things or meeting their goals, okay? But anyway, that's all I have for you today, group two. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If so, go ahead. Oh, and if it um, resonated, if so, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment, and if you'd like to be notified whenever I post new videos, then subscribe and ring that notification bell. Bye, Group 2! Hi, Group 3. Welcome to your reading. You have chosen the seashell. Um, so far... These, the readings have been pretty interesting. Um, you know, they're going in different directions right now, right? Which I think is super fun. This is a really open concept. We're getting really conceptual. Um, so yeah, I'm going to read your villain archetype and then I'll shuffle your cards, okay? So, group three. Ooh, Sorry about my reactions. Y'all don't take it personal. We're, this is all a journey of discovery. Stop eating that blanket. Sit down. Y'all, she's eating the blanket. Stop. Mm -mm. Okay. So we have... Uh-uh, move because if you mess with my camera. Stop for you mess with my camera, Mojo. Okay. So you have the bully... It says, mean for no reason, Ooh. wants to make others miserable, small or minor villain, and then last, victim of abuse or insecurities. Interesting. Group three. What's up, group three? What's up with you? Mean for no reason? We got to talk about it, okay? So I'm going to shuffle your cards and we're going to see... What makes you a bully? Why are you a bully, group three? Um, I'll shuffle your cards and catch you on the other side.
right, group three. Ooh, what I'm getting here for you with this bully card, I do get that there is some insecurity here um, for why this is your villain archetype. I do feel like um, there's an insecurity around um, like your family background, right? The resources that were available to you growing up. Um, I feel like you, you feel like you may have had to overcompensate in a lot of ways growing up for what you lacked. And I see here that you end up projecting this onto people, um, out of envy, right? And, and you create, it's like it creates conflict, this projection, but we're going to get deeper as we go into the cards. But anyway, we have the Ten of Pentacles here, the Pirate Sloop, and it says, well, this is the King of Cups, Pirate Sloop. Ooh, interesting. And so it says, American sloops were speedy, single-mastered ships, ideal for the Pirates of the Bahamas, okay? That's our King of Cups. And then we have the world and envy. So I feel like this is about um, the people opposite to you, right? This is who you feel you foil against, right? This is our the hero of the story, okay? You feel like these are people who have grown up with everything, right? We have the Ten of Pentacles and the world. These are people who've grown up with everything, with with um stuff at their you know they've had opportunities at their fingertips right i do feel like this is about resources so people who've grown who grew up with more resources more money more access right more prestige right i'm not sure where you are in life right now and like what you're pursuing maybe you're at a college uh, maybe you're in college right now maybe you're in a certain career field where you're constantly you're interacting with people that you feel have more resources than you okay and so you feel like because they had more resources growing up right or they have had maybe even a better more stable home life growing up with the world here you feel like that has afforded them access to certain opportunities you feel like this has afforded them um access to certain types of enjoyment entertainment um you know, life, like they're a livelihood or um, quality of life, right? Because I feel like with the world here, this person looks like super happy, like they're just enjoying their life, you know? And I feel like it's reflective in these these ships that we see, right? Um, we have the King of Cups, right? So this is somebody who who is abundant, somebody who is um, open to opportunities and theoretically who always has new opportunities coming towards them right and to be the pirate sloop it says a speedy single mastered ship ideal for the pirates of the bahamas right and so this ship doesn't take much to get to where it needs to go right this ship doesn't require much to quickly get to a destination right this is ideal um, and then, of course, we have envy at the bottom of this, which lets me know that this is this is what you're envying. This is what is um, on the receiving end of your insecurities. All right. Then we have over here, we have the three of pentacles. This is, I think this is you over here. So we have the three of pentacles, the caravel. All right. This is a small ship that has broad, broad bows, high, narrow poop. I don't even know what that means. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I don't know what this means in terms of pirate ships, but hold on. Yeah, but it says, and this is the Eight of Wands too, right? And so uh, Eight of Wands is about opportunities. So a caravel is a small ship that has broad bows, high, narrow poop, and usually three mass, three mass with Latin or both square and Latin sails, right? Um, so, and then we have the seven of wands and book, okay? So, for some of y'all, I think this is definitely like you're in college, right? Maybe you 
have gone to a school out of state or maybe you just have a you're not from a very well-off family and the college you're at has a lot of people that come from well-off families um but if not i mean that particular narrative doesn't have to necessarily like resonate but i'm getting that some that's a narrative for somebody okay but what i'm getting here is that you are somebody with this three of pentacles you feel like you had pretty shaky stability growing up right with this three of pentacles you didn't have much right maybe you feel like you lived in a smaller home or your family made less money or you had less 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 access to things right um you had to make do with what you have right there's not so much and see how it's like locked up like in this ten of pentacles these pentacles are all over the picture but in the three of pentacles they're like the three pentacles are like closed in up here and so it's like um maybe you feel like you growing up you had to be very um you know tight-fisted with your money right your family was very tight-fisted with with money and resources uh and with this eight of pentacles i mean eight of wands here I see somebody like you feel like you growing up um, with the eight of wands, like you had to do more to get the opportunities, right? You had to, like I said, overcompensate more to get the opportunities because compared to the king of cups here with the pirate sloop, you require all these bells and whistles. You have to have all this extra shit on you just to, you know... And I think it's funny because it said high narrow poop, but like, you know, like you have to have all this extra shit on you just to get the same thing, right? Just to achieve the same thing. You know what I mean? Whereas with this king of cups, this king of cups, like it's, it's a speedy single masted ship. It only needs one mast. This is ideal. Like it's, it's fast. Like it, because it doesn't need so much it can move quickly or because it can move quickly because it doesn't need so much right whereas with you it's like you need a lot because you lack a lot right growing up you you've lacked a lot so you had to do more to get more with the seven of wands this is like being very defensive about where you stand being very defensive about your path being you know and and very protective i would even say of where you come from or how you've or protective of, of of what you've gone through to get to where you are because it wasn't easy, right? You had to do more. It wasn't easy. And with the book here, I feel like um, if this is about school, I feel like it's because you you have worked so hard for your grades, and it is the it is that hard work of having the good grades that have gotten you where you are, and you are very protective of that, right? You um, hold that really close to you because. You know, because you didn't, because there are people around you that didn't have to have the same merit. You know what I'm saying? There are people around you that were able to get by a lot easier. And it's like, on the other hand, if you hadn't gone so hard in the books, you wouldn't be here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's not the same. There's this, this duality here, right? This opposition, but I feel like this is where that, that energy of, hmm, I think that's why this is like small or minor villain. Because one, I feel like this, I feel like you know, but like this is not really a big deal. This is not anything um, to be major about. This is more like just something I feel that irks you. And I do feel like it comes out at times you being defensive when you speak to people. Or maybe you do have people around you that, that try you sometimes. But I feel like, yeah, this comes from mostly just feeling um, insecure about where you've come from. Or insecure about what you bring to the table, you know? But I feel like, yeah, there this is like a... I don't want to say paranoia because for some of you, like some of you could just be, could be getting picked on, but I feel like, hmm. I feel like maybe you feel like you can't, you don't fit in, right? We have this, um, two of swords, right? Two of swords. And then we have the four of cups, Christopher Coden. And it says in the Bahamas, he took to the pirate round 
and attacked merchant ships off of Africa and Arabia. Okay, so this is already super defensive, right? This is you being stuck in the middle and feeling like you don't fit in on either side, right? You have to defend yourself from all sides or you can't go left, you can't go right. You're kind of stuck. Like, yeah, because when we have the hangman here. So you feel stuck. You feel like... Um, like, you don't really have a place or the options, right? I mean, it's interesting. Like, literally, Two of Swords and the Four of Cups and the Hangman came out in one reading in the same column. Like, there's this just energy here, like, feeling like you don't fit in. And then we have this drum roll, right? And so it's like, you feel like you're always on the defense. Like, you always have to be on alert. There's no energy here of being able to rest and just chill and just enjoy the moment, right? Right? Um, you feel like there's maybe no one to talk to, right? You have no one to talk to. Um, and you have things to say too, because when we have the Ace of Swords at the bottom of the deck twice, that's so interesting. Like the Ace of Swords is at the bottom of the deck twice and the drum roll, right? There's this anticipation, like you're holding your tongue, you hold your tongue a lot. But I feel like when you do speak, maybe you come off a little sassy or defensive or overly critical because maybe you feel like people haven't given you a chance to like, I don't, I'm not sure what the exact scenario is, but it's like maybe you, you have already been judged and so now you don't have anyone to talk to and the people, when you do talk to these people who've judged you, you are kind of a bully or maybe you are just kind of defensive um or maybe maybe they haven't bullied i mean maybe they haven't bullied you maybe you're a bully all on your own because you have been projecting this jealousy or this envy onto these people maybe you've already decided that these people won't accept you or you already decided that these people um because y'all are different then they're going to judge judge you, right? Like remember I was saying you're protective. You're protective of the of the struggle that you went through or the hardship you went through to get to where you are. Hold on, let's. And so yeah, and then at the bottom of the deck over here we have the Knight of Pentacles and there's this like wall. There's this wall in the water that these people are climbing over. And so I feel like it's your expectations that is creating this dynamic, right? Like it's your insecurities that are causing you to fall into this archetype, right? Being defensive, already putting yourself on opposition of others based off of insecurity. But with this Knight of Pentacles with this wall, it's like you have this expectation already set that there is um, a wall between you and these people. There's this difference that make that like and then we have the five of cups underneath here and so it's like you already have this expectations that this isn't going to work out that these you know aren't going to these people can't relate to me or i can't be friends with them and i'm not sure where this expectation come from like for some of y'all these people already judged you for others this is from just your own mind but this wall here with the knight of pentacles is what's important right like there's this perception that there is a wall between you and these other people or there's a wall around you right you have a blocked heart chakra um or you need, you just might need to work with your heart chakra you know what i'm saying to release some of those insecurities but yeah there's like this wall around you and your ability there's a wall keeping there from being this like trust right there's a lack of vulnerability Okay, um, but we at the bottom of the deck we have the seven of the seven 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 in reverse and then personal, right? And so I feel like what it comes down to is that you're taking these differences personal when they're not, right? The sevens are about like our path, right? Because remember when you have the seven of wands here, like I said, this is about being protective and defensive of where you've come from from what you've what you've done to get here, right? your path um and it's like this is about accepting that other people's paths um the lives other people have lived 
the things they've gone through or haven't gone through in comparison to you are not really personal. And then we have let it go underneath that. And so I feel like group three, um, I feel like you, the reason you are this villain archetype is because you take things personal that are very small or not worth it, you know, minor things, right? That's why this small or minor villain here is because this is this is a small problem. Like, you know, this is just some insecurity that you have. Uh, this isn't a major character. Like, this is, you're not a major villain, basically. Because this isn't a major thing, right? This isn't a major problem. So just let it go, right? Like, you, you're going to be different than other people. You're going to have a different background. You're going to have different struggles than other people. There are going to be people who have no idea what it's like to go through half the shit you've gone through. And there are going to be people who've gone through worse. But it's like you can't let that make you, you know, put yourself in competition with other people, basically. Like, you don't need to compare yourself to other people at all. There's no reason to even think about the difference between what this person has gone through and you've gone through unless the situation really does call for it right when it comes to like different perspectives but just like that in terms of validating yourself right because envy is here so just in terms of validating yourself you don't need to worry about other people you know what I mean like as long as you are proud of yourself proud of who you are what you've done and where you're going that's all the validation you need. But anyway, that's all I have for you today, Group 3. If you enjoyed this reading, if you enjoyed this reading and it resonated, then go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I post a new video, then subscribe and ring that notification bell. Bye, Group 3. Group th four. <laughs> I'm so used to only having three groups. Hi, group four. You are my special extra group. You have chosen the clear marble, okay? First, we're going to see what is your villain archetype, and then I'll shuffle your cards, okay? Group four. Four. Ooh, you are the beast. Wow. Acts on instincts and base desires. Destructive tendencies and can't be reasoned or controlled. Okay, I think that's what to say. Can't be reasoned with or controlled, all right? So we are going to see what makes you a beast, right? Some of these things might already resonate with you, and if they don't, that's okay. We're going to get into the cards and see what makes you this beast archetype, and I will catch you on the other side. group four all right I do already feel like this is kind of similar to group three in a little bit of ways um which is interesting because I never do four groups so it's interesting that the third and fourth group are a little similar but Anyway, if you felt drawn to group four, then maybe you should watch group four too, or maybe you're coming from group four. Maybe you felt drawn to both, you know, what have you. But what I'm seeing here with you being this beast, I do get somebody, I do get a triggered energy, right? I get somebody that you are somebody who is sensitive about your status, right? You're sensitive about what you have. You're, sen you're sensitive about where you are in life. I'm getting that some of you could be a hothead, 
Some of you can like lose your cool easily or you just, you might get offended easily or you get ang angry easily. Um, some of you, you don't have to, but you could be the type to like maybe ra start raising your voice. Some of you don't, you know, just because you get angry or triggered doesn't mean that you have an outward reaction. Although with the beast here, this, this definitely can imply that you have like an outward reaction, but you can just get angry. This can just be about you, you become enraged, right? You become frustrated um, when you feel like, like you're not like measuring up to certain standards. I don't know, like. Like, if you feel like your place or, like, your position in life or if you feel like you're being judged by what you have, um, there's a trigger here. But anyway, let me just get into the card. So, we have the Five of Pentacles, the Knight of Swords here, and it says John Hawkins. He was the older cousin of Francis Drake. His streamlining of ships contributed to England's defeat. Of the Spanish Armada. Okay. Then we have Joker. And then we have All Material. Okay. All Material. And so I do feel like this has to do with what you feel you physically possess. Whether this is money or like clothes or status or just material objects or a certain appearance. With this all material here, I feel like you, um, you're you very much focused on how you present or like how people or like what people think you have, right? You're very focused on that or concerned about that, like what people think you have. With the, um, with the Joker here, I do feel like there's this judgment, like this embarrassment even. Um, that you feel is placed over yourself, right? That you have to play. I don't know. It's like there's this energy of, of putting on a false persona, right? Like maybe you feel um, like you don't put on, like you maybe you feel like you don't play the role well, right? Because, because you have this lack, right? You perceive that you have this lack with this five of pentacles. And so, and so maybe there's this part of you that feels like even though you're playing this the way you feel like you should play it, um, you still feel judgment, right? You still feel judgment. But I feel like with this Knight of Swords here, it's like when you feel that judgment, it triggers this the a defensive response, right? It's like you're quick to get a, get defensive. You're quick to um, maybe even argue with people or quick to defend yourself, quick to, like you're quick to jump to your defense, to your own rescue, right? And these are swords, so it has to do with like what you say, you know what I'm saying? So like I said, some of you may be hotheads and, you know, start arguments or, um, you know, might start going back and forth. Maybe some of you um, do hold your tongue, but you just become um, enraged, like, and it's not really easy for you to control it, right? Because to me, the Knight of Swords is an impulsive card, right? That's an impulsive energy. And so it's like, you become defensive very quickly regardless of how you choose to react in the long run, you know? And it's because you are very sensitive about your material, right? Your material possessions. You're very sensitive about um, your appearance or what, how you present, right? So you get defensive, okay? Um, and like... And I feel like because it says base desires, acts on instincts and base desires. So there is a shallowness here. There is an immaturity here. And that shouldn't offend you. I don't want you to feel offended by this. Um, but there's this part of you that wants to live up to a certain expectation. And so, um, and because it has to do with the physical world, it is going to come out as a base desire. You know what I'm saying? But with his destructive tendencies, like it says, um, his streamlining of ships contributed to England's defeat of the Spanish Armada. And so I feel like you could have this relent, like your rage or your anger can be kind of relentless. And um, you may have this reputation or, or fall into this archetype 
because the impact of your anger or frustration uh, can, might come out as a little destructive, right? Maybe you um, have ruined relationships or connections based on this. Maybe, hmm, maybe some of you have like it's like these reactions have put you in a worse situation. Maybe, hmm. But it's, yeah, like, I'm getting this unrelenting, you know, rage, pretty much. And so then, or, or just like an unrestrained reaction, right, with the knight, the knight of Swords. Like, this reaction that kind of comes and plays out um, despite any efforts from you, right? It's just very impulsive. Um, and then over here, so we have the Magician, right? We have the Knight of Cups, Richard Worley. He set out from New York with an ill crew and carried few supplies. They captured a boat laden with household goods. Okay. Mm. Wow. And then we have Seven of Wands and then Envy. I feel like there's some entitlement coming through with the beast. I feel like there's some entitlement coming through. I feel like, um, and also there's this energy, well, how would I say it? I don't want to say selfish, but very much like I'll take what's mine. Like I'm getting this energy of you will take what's yours because you feel like you are just as deserving as the other people who have the things you want, right? Envy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see what they have and you're like, I should have that too with the Seven of Wands. I should have that too. I work just as hard. You know, I do just as much. Okay? You see how I'm getting kind of hyped up? Like, I feel like you're somebody, you hype yourself up. Maybe you rant. Maybe it's that you rant. Like, maybe you don't necessarily go and fight and argue but you get angry enough to rant. Like, you get, you know, like, if anybody watches a Gretzko, you know how, like, she's at work and she, you know, her boss will do something. You know, she might not go off on him right then and there, but she has a beast inside. And so she'll go to the bathroom or to the supply closet or whatever, and she will scream her little head off, you know, because she has to get that rage out. And it's like, that's what I'm getting here, like, like, you feel like, you know, you'll take what's yours. Like, I should have that too. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that should be mine too. And with the magician and then the knight of cups over it, it's like, I'm getting somebody that will um, do what they need to do to take what's theirs, you know? And that's where I'm getting this destructive vibe too. It's like, because, um, because I, I get this energy of you'll come in and just take. For some of you... And that could be very literal. Like you've come in and you've just taken something. But maybe that can be interpreted in other ways based off like your story. But I'm definitely getting this energy of like when you get this trigger of feeling judged because you don't have something or because you haven't, you know, had the same access to certain things, you become very resourceful. And I feel like in a destructive way. Like maybe you break things even. I'm seeing somebody breaking something. Um, but for those of you who don't get destructive. I do feel like. Maybe you just start working. You, you start pushing even, even harder. But it's like I see you. You can be hard on yourself. Right? Because like I said, there's this judgment in this Joker card. And Joker came out twice. Joker came out in the pirate deck as well. And it's like you you feel, you might be hard on yourself because you just feel like you look silly or you feel like you look stupid or, you know, it's just, it's very much like you have to protect yourself. Like you're putting on, on your defensive beast costume to ward off the bad guys, to ward off the people trying to hurt you is what I'm feeling like. You know, like, like what is, oh, there's something, 
what is like like you know how most superheroes when they transform they have a saying you know and it's like oh and then they just like turn into a beast they turn into they just transform into this animal you know that's what i'm getting it's like when you feel like somebody's coming for your neck you you will turn you turn up and you will come for their neck whether you know you really be going toe to toe or you just you rant or you transmute it into um into your efforts in your daily life but it's like you you just go ham with because you're full of rage you have this rage you know what i mean but i feel like it is destructive in some ways for some of and like i was saying to the other groups like these are going to resonate these are going to resonate in various degrees depending on how much of a villain you really are in your everyday life. Okay, so for some of you, you break people's shit. For some of you, you um you know, start you start arguments. You you've started fights. You've you know, you've thrown hands. For others of you, you've simply, you know, gone into your room and like wrote angry poetry or or you've, you know, after whatever happened, you go and you like, you know, do a pep talk at yourself in the mirror. Or you're just really hard on yourself like, like you should have done, you know, whatever it is, it's like you turn up, right? Your your reaction when you get triggered, you, you turn up emotionally and you do something that, I mean, for all intents and purposes, has relatively negative consequences, Right? Um, like for example, if you do, if you are a little hard on yourself, you know, you might achieve a little, little more, but maybe you've been depriving yourself of sleep or you've been, um, just working too hard. Right. Or, um, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you react, but the outcome's not like great. You know what I'm saying? The outcome's not great. But then also over here, so we have the four of wands. We have the five of pentacles again, and it says compass. And then we have the page of swords, okay? And then right under that, we have drum roll. And so I feel this is really about you just wanting to be, you know, you want to be your ideal self. You want to have what you feel you should have, right? You want that victory, right? With the four of wands, right? You want, you want your dreams to come true. You know, you want your Cinderella moment. And with the compass, the five of swords, I mean, with the compass over here with the five of pentacles and then this page of swords, I'm getting like tunnel vision, right? I'm getting a very, a very narrow um, point of view or like, it's like you're kind of zoned in on this, um, on this goal that. It's almost like you feel like maybe you're not reaching it um, as quickly as you want. But I'm also getting like a this social media vibe. Like there's this image of your life that you want or this, this image of who you feel like you should be that you see like I'm getting a destination, right? Like maybe you, you watch a lot of or you follow a lot of people who vacation a lot on social media uh, and you want to do that. It's like you want to do these things and you feel like you're not doing these things yet or you're not where you want to be yet. And with the drum roll, I'm pretty sure this came out with the last group as well. But it's like there's this anticipation for these things to play out. But at the same time, it's like it's not really happening as fast as you want it to be or you want it to go. Right. And a lot of ways for some of you, it might not be happening at all or very much. This this goal that you're working towards. Um, but I feel like. Hmm. Yeah, I just feel like it's not working out the way you want. Like you still feel very far away from it or you still feel like stagnant or like you don't know what like you don't know what to do with the page of swords. Like you're still on the outside looking in. You still haven't. Um, transitioned into making moves towards it but it's like and it's like you are motivated right because this knight of swords comes out over here with the five of pentacles but it's like this is a reaction to judgment is what i'm feeling like when you feel like you're on the outside right when you feel whenever you start to feel like you're on the outside whenever you start to feel like you don't have enough or like you're being judged for not having enough 
you get very defensive and you pop off is pretty much what I'm seeing here. Um, I feel like, hmm, this is really interesting because I feel like I lost my train of thought. Thought, oh yeah, but it's like this reaction. I feel like some of y'all are hotheads. I feel like a good chunk of you are hotheads, or you just you just be set off. But this alone is kind of destructive, right? Whatever this this hot-headed reaction is destructive because I feel like it it pushes you further back or it it sets you further back, right? It doesn't allow you to bridge gaps. It it burns bridges, you know what I mean? Because we have because there's this this envy here, this envy where you don't really want to see other people happy, right? So for some of you, even even just seeing, right? Because there's a social media element. Even just seeing these people with the Three of Cups enjoying their life sets you off, right? We have a nine, I mean, a Ten of Swords at the bottom of the deck over here as well. And so it's like, and look, I'm sorry, y'all, but we get into these shadows. I didn't know we were going to go this deep, but we're going this deep. But yeah, it's like, I feel like just seeing people enjoying their life or doing the things you want to do with the three of cups here sets you off okay it's like maybe you become destructive and you just like you just for some of you you might get mad at those people right like maybe you feel like your friends went out went out without you and they posted on social media you didn't get invited to go do something and that made you upset or you're simply maybe you're just looking at some influencers and seeing them do the things that you have you can't do because you don't have the money yet or you don't have the job yet or you don't have the house yet or whatever that might make you upset but with this ten of swords it's like you don't want to see it it's like i get this feeling of like if i'm if if i'm upset then everybody needs to be upset like nobody can have a good time if i'm not having a good time like i feel like like, this is like a wreck the dinner table type of energy. Like, like I will flip this whole table over. I will knock everybody drinks over. Like, I don't want to see because I want that. I want it like, I'm feeling like very ranting. Like, I, and it's because it's just insecurity. That's why I feel like this cause is a bit of a continuation of pile three. Um, but we have picking the wounds. It's like you feel like you're being picked on it. It really like it it pokes it tr like I said triggers like it it's poking at these insecurities like and maybe for some of you you need to reduce your time on social media okay like if it's if you being on Instagram or wherever and you see in certain things and you notice that it's like setting you off or getting you making you feel insecure in whatever way that you just start getting frustrated then you need to reduce your time on social media or change what type of social media you use, you know, like, or, or change how you use your phone, maybe start playing games on your phone or find different sites. Like for me, if I, if Twitter is a little overwhelming, I'll just go to Tumblr. Okay. I never left Tumblr. Let me tell you, I never left Tumblr. It's always been a nice, peaceful place. Okay. So, you know, if you notice that you're getting frustrated and if this is a case where you feel like you certain people don't want to hang out with you anymore because of, you know, superficial matters, you know, fuck them, you know, fuck them. If I were you, hell, I would block them. If, if you're really upset about it and, and you feel like block them, stop being friends with these people. You know, I think it really comes down to being more, um intentional about your environment and that's any environment your room your social media feed everything what are you allowing to interact with you and have access to your energy and if you feel upset and triggered when you see certain things online then change what you see online you know change what you interact with and you don't have to feel like a clown which is basically what these joker cards are you don't have to feel like a clown because you don't have what other people have or you're not doing what other people do. Like, last group, like I said, stop comparing yourself to other people. Like, you know, but I think that what makes the last group different is that in this group, there is an element of, you know, of lashing out. There's an element of lashing out here, right? 
Um, and maybe part of lashing is out is that you'll start picking at other people's flaws, right? Once you start feeling like you're being judged for what you lack, maybe you'll start judging, you'll lash out and judge what somebody else lacks um, as a way to like just defend yourself, right? Like tear people down because like it's like if they're having a good time, um, you don't want them to have a good time, right? Like if you got to be judged, then you're going to judge them. If they want to shut you down, you're going to shut them down. So yeah, I mean, some of you, this is, this could be in retaliation to, to being judged for others of you. This could just be you projecting your own judgment of yourself. You, you know, which one you fall into, but anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it for you today. Group four, if you enjoyed this reading and where it resonated, Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I post new videos, then subscribe and ring that notification bell. Bye, group three. I mean, four. Bye, group four.